I'm Karen Collins. The American Institute for Cancer Research, World Cancer Research Fund expert report concluded that physical activity is convincingly linked to lower risk of colorectal cancer and probably to lower risk of postmenopausal breast cancer and endometrial cancer. But the question comes, what about cancer survivors? Well, today we're really lucky to have an expert in uh, the field of cancer survivorship. This is Dr. Lee Jones, who is Associate Professor and Scientific Director of the Duke Center for Cancer Survivorship at Duke University, and a little time with him and get his insights on this. So for a while we didn't know, and now the evidence is looking pretty good that it makes a difference for cancer survivors too. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, 20 years ago, uh, when we when we first uh, started talking about the role of exercise following a cancer diagnosis, I think uh, a lot of people were quite shocked. Actually, the, you know the idea that you're going to be start exercising people, you know, first of all with cancer, but even cancer patients going through chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So I think at that time it was a, it was a very novel concept to think about exercise in that. And I think most of the recommendations at that time was for for cancer survivors actually to avoid activity and rest and you know and and take it easy essentially. Um, so over the past 20 years, we've been kind of chipping away at that dogma, um, if you will, and now we're you know we're probably up to close to around 80 studies that are showing um, pretty pretty remarkable benefits of exercise for a broad range of, of cancer survivors, both during therapy and then following the completion of therapy. Mm -hmm. Now the evidence, a lot of there was a meta-analysis that just came out this year in the journal of uh, the National Cancer Institute. Yes, and they concluded um, decreased all-cause mortality for most cancers and then specifically for breast and colorectal were the ones that really had the, the data, right? Yeah, so there, those were, um, that was a, that was a, a meta-analysis systematic review um, that looked at um, not only, that they weren't looking at uh, exercise training interventions, they were looking at uh, epidemiologic studies, so observational mm -hmm. studies that are, that are large cohorts of people where they've asked people how much exercise do you do and then they followed these, these individuals for a long period of time to see if they have a cancer recurrence to see um, if they die from cancer or from other causes. And it appears that the evidence in general, um, particularly for breast and colon cancer, the individuals who are doing more activity or doing more exercise appear to have better survival. Both uh, cancer-specific survival, so survival actually from, from dying of cancer, mm -hmm. and dying from all causes, relative to individuals who are inactive. Um, so again, th these are observational studies that are not big randomized trials that not cause and effect. Right. But it certainly uh, is very encouraging for people like myself to, and other, other people, of course, to see this data and, so, and show these really uh, pretty strong associations, inverse associations, between exercise and living longer following cancer. So that's, that's very exciting. It's great to know that there's steps that you can take when you've been hit by something like that. Well, I think um, a lot of things, when, when we talk to individuals who are in our studies, it's, you know, it's, it very much comes down to they obviously are very interested in, in improving quality of life and lowering levels of fatigue and improving things like fitness. And, but they're very interested as well in knowing, you know, if I exercise, is that going to influence my, the risk of my cancer coming back? And I think a lot of times with, with cancer therapies, it's a case of they're, they're, it's completely out of their control. It's, um, so you've got individuals who have been in control of their health most of their lives and now they've been hit with this cancer diagnosis and they're receiving radiation or, or chemotherapy or, or surgery, and they've really got little control over those. And I think exercise, as well as nutrition, is something that the individual can actually do for themselves. And it, it, I think it's very powerful to take something like exercise or nutrition and think, you know, this is something that I can control that may, in fact, influence you know, the risk of uh, this cancer coming back. So I think it's, it's very powerful from a number of perspectives. And one of the barriers, I think, uh, for cancer patients, cancer survivors often, is uh, cancer-related fatigue, which yes. is kind of the, the hardest message to say, gosh, it would be wonderful if you could be physically active just at the very time that they're... How, how, the, the evidence is that actually it can improve that fatigue, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. There's, there's, you know, um, I think with the exception of fitness and I think um, quality of life, I think the stronger evidence we have is, is for fatigue. So. Um, I think that's very encouraging, and, and of course, it's, it seems a little bit... It's counterintuitive. It is, it's completely tired, counterintuitive yeah. to think, oh, you know, I'm really, really tired, you know, and you want to get me to exercise. And so it's counterintuitive. So when we did the first studies on that, when we said to the oncologist, you know, we're going to be looking at the role of, of exercise to improve fatigue levels, I said, well, these cancer patients are very tired. I don't know if they're going to be able to exercise. 
We said, well, let's, let's, let's give it a go. And of course, lo and behold, we, we, the individuals who are randomized to exercise had to report lower fatigue. And if you think about it, it makes, it makes actually a lot of sense. Um, because I think one of the worst things you can do in any condition, not just after following a cancer diagnosis, but any condition, is just to sit on the sofa and do nothing. We know how bad just doing nothing is. So you think about cancer diagnosis, not only are individuals being told to be sedentary, but then they're getting the, the double whammy, if you will, because they're getting all these therapies mm -hmm. that are causing further uh, impairments in, in their bodily systems that can then, you know, that just compounds the problem. So I think, you know, exercise breaks that cycle.